Yes. Yeah, actually, uh, I have to uh, go hospital. That's why I immediate I move from oh, there. No issue, bro. Is, is everything fine? Yeah, everything fine. Uh, like um, due to some reason. Okay, I'll like to discuss later. Okay, perfect. So guys, uh, we have discussed about the IGMP and uh, IGMP is an internet group management protocol. Right, and it's a layer three protocol. So whatever the message we have in the IGMP, all masses encapsulate with, with IP, right? And the IGMP has a TTL value one. That's why it is used in the LAN side. Okay. Uh, we have a three versions of IGMP that we have discussed, right? So version one we have, we have version two, and we have version three as well, right? Version three we have introduced for the some security concern. Okay. By default, the default version is two. Okay. After enabling the PIM on the interface, by default, PIM is, uh, IGMP is disabled on interface. So once you enable the PIM, for example, interface zero slash zero IP PIM dense mode, or either you can configure the sparse mode as well as just need to enable the PIM, right? After enabling the PIM on interface, your IGMP will be enabled. After enabling the PIM on interface, your IGMP will be enabled, right? You can check this command show show I uh, show IP IGMP, right? The command interface zero slash zero, and you can have a look. IGMP. Okay, so guys, in the last class, we have discussed about the IGMP version one, and uh, we have some we have seen some limitation of the IGMP version one because in IGMP version one, what happened? We only have a query packet, right? And we have a report packet. We have a query packet and report packet. Query packet is sent by the router. It's sent to the router, sent by the router to the host, right? And this packet, the report packet is sent by the host to that I want to join the multicast group, right? So, so report packet will send by the host. This host is going to claim that, hey, I want to join the multicast group. Okay. And query packet is sent by the router. So in the query packet, they are just going to ask, hey, is there anyone who wants to receive the multicast traffic? Yep. So this query packet is sent by the router. This router will send the query packet uh, to the client, right? Hey, is there anyone who wants to join the multicast traffic? So in this uh, query packet, what happened? What information I'm going to put? I'm just going to put the, you know, the source IP address will be 1101 and right, the distance IP address will be 224.0.0.1, right? That is going to represent that all host. This IP is going to represent that all host. Whereas 224.0.0.2, right? This is going to represent that all route. So when the I, router will send the query packet and they are asking, hey, is there anyone who wants to receive the multicast traffic? You will send on the uh, dot one, right? The all different the all host over there. And in this case, what happened? I'm going to put the query packet, and in this query packet, the group address will be what? The group address will be 0, 0, 0, 0. Because I don't know, right? I don't know. Maybe this guy belongs to the, this uh, user belongs to the, this group, right? 226.101. And maybe this guy belongs to the 226.101. And this guy will go to 228.101. So I just send the information. Hey. Anyone who wants to receive the multicast traffic for any question, right? That's why I'm putting the 0, 0, 0. So when the person, right, when the router is interested, when the client is interested, they will send the report packet, right? And the report packet, what destination address will be happen? Source will be what? The client IP, right, 101.02, and destination will be what? 226.101. I'm looking for, right, I'm looking for the multicast system only for the, this particular destination, right? So this was the IGMP version one. But take example, if this host said that, hey, I don't want to receive the multicast traffic. Maybe this guy maybe make the switch uh, TV channel off. So what happened? This guy said, "Hey, I don't want to receive the multicast traffic." 
So in this case, what happened, this router, or we can say this client does not have an ability, right? This client and this router does not have an ability to inform this router, hey, please don't send the multicast system. They don't have ability. They can't tell this guy. In IGMP version one, this guy, R2, cannot tell to the R1, hey, don't send the multicast system because I'm no more. They don't have ability. So to avoid this problem, what we have introduced? We have introduced the IGMP version two. And this is the default version. Successful. After enabling the PIP. This will uh, be the default version. Uh, no, when will we use 224.0.0.2? Because when the I'm coming sending... to that point, I'm coming to that point. One minute. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, that is not there. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah. So in IGMP version two, as compared to the IGMP version one, right? This is the IGMP version one packets. Okay. So as compared to the IGMP version one, in IGMP version two, we have a same packet query. We have a report packet. Now we have introduced the new masses that is known as the leave masses. Now the host can inform right to the router, hey, please don't send the multicast stream by, by using this mass, leave packet. This thing is not available in the version one. And then after that, we have a group specific queue. This is normal query, right? This is normal query and this is the group specific query. I'll let you know the difference, don't worry. And except this thing, right? Except this one, we have added the another field in version two that is called as the MRT. Maximum response time. Yes, okay. No, it's a time. So normally, if you just have a look, right? Normally, if you just, I'll show you this part as well as if you go on the Cisco, not Cisco, IGMP version one. And uh, also in the like, you know, uh, I can, I get the like this one, right? header I want, like I can get the header of the, yep, this is the header of the version. And if you see the version two header, right? IGMP version two header. You see, this is version one, version two. So now you can see we are going to add the MRT field. This field MRT maximum response time is not present in your version. See. We don't have a this way, MRT. MRT is only present in the version two. I'll let you know what is the use of MRT. First, go through that. What is the IGP version two, first of all, right? Let's do one thing. Uh, let's start this devices and let me show you the configuration. But default is version two. And version one and version two both are backward compatible. Nee? R6, so let's name this guy R1, R2, R3, R4. So I'll put this one R6 and R7, I'm not interested. R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, R6, not interested. So IP interface, buddy. You can see I have IPs configured on 101 on this interface, right? R2. And all these guys, my client, so IP interface brief, show IP root. They have a 100 slash routing table. You can disable this guy as well as if you want. I can disable the IP routing and make this guy the proper host. R3. 
So I believe it's brief. Show IP root still there. Let's remove this guy. No IP routing. R4. Show IP interface is brief. No IP routing. Done. And R5. Show IP interface is brief. Show IP interface is brief. Show IP root. IP routing is there. No IP routing. Done. So let's go to router number one. And what I can do over there, just capture this one. And I'll first run the router. IP multicast routing must be enabled, right? Okay. To just forward the multicast packet because by default, the multicast routing is disabled, right? If you have any question regarding any command line, you can ask me because already we have discussed this command, right? But still, if you have a question, you can ask me. Interface 0 slash 0 IP PIM test. Me. After putting this command, what happened? Do show IP IGMP interface 0 slash 0. IGMP is enabled on this particular interface. Right, and the default version is what? Two. Let's do one thing. I'm going to change this version interface zero slash zero. IP IGMP version one. I just need to capture the QD packet. That's it. So that I can put it into the paint file for the reference purpose. Just for the referencing, I'm just going to take a capture of this one and uh, it. All good. So IGMP query. At the same time, now let's run the. Okay, I can also. I also need to take IGMP report packet capture. So let's go now to interface zero slash zero. IP IGMP join join group will be two two six dot one one one. They will send the report packet. IP in the version of the So I've enabled the IP join group for the, this router number two, right? This client and uh, have joined this group, uh, version one, right? Because by default, version two is running. I just change the version. So now this guy report. And let's make it a screenshot of this guy's mass. Just for the referencing, nothing else. Because already we have discussed this part. So just for the reference purpose. So just try in the down side. Now let's come to the version two. So how we can change the version? I just need to go in the interface zero slash row IP IGMP version two. Right. You are going to uh, you are going to change the version and you are going to enable the uh, IGMP on a per interface basis. Global command is not there. Same thing on a R1 as well as I need to go on a router one. I said the IGMP version will be two. Right? You can have a three versions: R3 as well as interface zero slash zero. IP IGMP join group will be what two two six dot one one. R4 interface 0 slash 0. IP IGMP join group will be 226.11. And R5 interface 0 slash 0. IP IGMP join group will be 226.11. Right? All these hosts have joined the group right now. Okay. R2, R3, R4, R5. And if you go back to the Wireshark and you can see all my members, right, are sending the report packet 3, 2, 4, and 5. Right now, all this people are, all this guy is able to receive the multicast traffic. All this user is able to receive the multi. All they have joined the group. Now, if you let's capture the report packet of the version two, uh, I'm not report QD first of all. I have it. And GMP. Capture the report on this one. Theory, I can capture this one. Right? And uh, we can have a so version one. Theory on this one. This, one. this is also two. Now have a difference.
version two three. And this is version one. Membership, this is the version one, membership query, right? This is the version two membership query packet. I told you that we have a three, four packets over there. We have a query packet, report packet, lead packet, and group specific query. This is not a group specific query. It's a normal query packet. And in this one, we have a MRT filter. I'll let you know what is the use of MRT filter. Don't worry about that. And for the error detecting, right, we are putting the checksum information over there. For our error detecting, we are going to put the checksum is over there, and then we have a multicast address will be set to the 0 or 0 or 0. Same like I was saying, nothing is different. Right? If you just compare with the report packet now, any on source, I can take it right, report 101 and uh, see the difference. I'll first show you the difference, then I'll come to the lead passage as well as. All good. And I'll just go there. All done. So this is the version two report packet. And this is the version one report. Is there any difference is happening between these two versions? Except the MRT. Except this part. The type field, the bytes are different, are they? Yeah. This guy is different. Just for the reference, for right, just have a look over there. We have a type is different. I'll let you know just in the uh, after the end of the class. Oh, sorry, uh, at the end of the topic, right? Class. What is the, the what is the make uh, what is the use of this two person byte? In the query packet, it's still the same byte. See, same. In in this one, we have a different, but still, the uh, everything is same, right? MRT is same, right? Checksum, multicast address. Still, I'm sending the report packet to the two two six dot one one, and same thing, I'm sending also this guy. Same multicast address over there. Same multicast address over there. Right now, let's come back to the point. Let's go to R3 and R3 say right now what happened? All this user can receive the multicast traffic, right? Can I ping this right here? Ping. Yep. See. However, all this guy is able to give the reply. How many cats have sent, right? So one, right? I can get the reply from the all person. Because it means that all this user is able to receive the multicast traffic. Now what happened? R3, debug IP IGN on R1 as well as debug IP IGN. R3, I say that interface zero slash zero. Hey, I don't want to receive the. Let's go to R4 and say that I don't want to receive the multicast traffic. I don't want to listen to the multicast problem. Right now, from the server, right? From the server, everyone is receiving the multicast traffic. Everyone. Every single person. But what happened? He said, hey, I don't want to receive the multicast traffic. So this guy has the ability to inform to the server. I'm going to delete this group, right? I'm deleting this group. And if you see the capture, Am I sending uh, any kind of lead message over there? Normally, what I told you that in version two, we have introduced the version two just because of what? This guy. Only for this guy, right? This thing comes later, right? This part comes late, later. But the main purpose is what of the version two? The main purpose was to introduce the version two just for the lead packet. But what happened? Am I sending? No. If you go back to the router on five now, and I say that, let's capture this link as well as. Okay. 
duty work, IPI, GMP. And I said, no group. Right? Go back to the R2. And go back to the art. Art is leave it out. Now, see the difference is happening. According to your book and RFC, right? Two things is there. And uh, Leave message. No. Read this line. When a host leave a group, right, it send up IGMP version to leave message, right? When IGMP version to uh, version to router receive a leave message, it immediately send up group specific. I'll show you this message as well. As. What this line is saying that when a host leave a group, right, it send up IGMP leave uh, version to leave message, right, and router has to be receive it. In according to the book, right? Now, according to the RFC, This point is clear. The difference, two differences happening. One is, one line is saying that one line is saying that according to the RFC, राजू पतली अब मैं खाता हूँ क्या बोलते हैं तुझे पता है ना मुझे नहीं जाननी sorry rfc part i did not get what they want to say okay so, okay oh you rfc part you didn't get okay no. the rfc is saying that this is the router right this is switch 
PC, 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 PC. This IP address is 101. This IP, okay, 102. This IP address is 103. This IP address is 104. This IP address is 105. Take example. Right now, this guy is sending the query packet, right? So this person has sent the report packet. Right? After that, this person has sent the report packet. So in the group, right? In the group, how the process is happening, right? How they are uh, like joining the group. First, PC number two has joined the group. Then PC number three has joined the group. After that, PC number four and PC number five. Right? Now, RFC 2236 recommends that a host send a leap group message only if the living member was the last host to send a membership report in the response of the QD packet. So who was the last host was this guy, right? If this person is going to leave, uh, if this person, right, if this person is going to leave the group, then it will send the leave message. This guy will not. For example, if I'm going to leave this group, uh, in this case, take example, the PC number five, right? Or maybe the four. If this guy is going to leave the group, right? If this guy is going to leave the group, they will never send the leave message. This guy will never send the leave them because who has joined the first group? The first joined this group person, right? This is the guy the first has joined, right? The group 226.101. Not this guy. So if this guy will leave the group, right? If this guy will leave the group, then it will send the leave message. Not this one. For example, if this person, right, if this person has leave the group, so they will send the leave message, right? After that, who is the last person? This guy. So now this person is not available because they have to send the leave message. Now what happened? If this guy will send a leave, uh, leave the group, if this guy will leave the group, they will send a leave message. But what about this guy now, right now? For example, I'm not going to leave the group for this person. I'm going to leave the group for this person. They will never send the leave message over it. Last member of the group. That according to the RFC, but most of the vendor, right? Leave the group. So it's totally upon the vendor by vendor. It's totally upon the vendor by vendor. This is the thing happened. The lead masses. If somebody will ask, if somebody will ask you in the interview, you have to tell like this. Whenever the user will leave the group, they will send the lead message. And if you have, to, if you want to make a more correct over there, you can include the RFC. If you want to make a more correct, but most of the vendor right operating system is going to behave like a. Whenever the lead, uh, user will leave the masses, they will send the lead. Yes, Ami. Uh, sir, I didn't understand why R1 is leaving the group first. Uh, why? What is the reason? The previous diagram, you told R1 will leave the group, right? R2, R2 will leave the group. Yeah. And R2 will leave the group. It will send a leave message. Uh, right. But I haven't leave the group right now. R2, I haven't leave on R2. I confused on R3 and R4, R5 right now. So one. So will all all send the leave message? No, only if this guy is going to leave the group, if this guy is going to leave the group, this guy will send the leave message. And this leave message okay. will send on which address? This leave, when this guy will leave the group, this ma this guy will send the leave message on this address. Source will be 1103 and distance will be what? Dot. All dot. So in this case, what happened? Only this guy, right? Only the routers, because in your network, what happened? We can have a multiple uh, routers, right? R2 is also configured, R3 also configured, behave like a sending the multicast stream. So they are just going to inform to the every router in my domain, hey, don't send a multicast stream. That's true, comes in the picture over there. All router. This guy is not going to inform to this person, not this person, not this person. Okay. But if R2 wants to leave the group, it will also send a leave message, right? Of course. So every router will send the leave message, correct? I'm, I'm telling this. See, according to RFC, only the one host person, the last host person, right? 
but most of the vendor is supporting uh, most of the uh, vendor operating system is supporting whenever the person will send the uh, person will leave the group they will send the lead message what do you mean by last host sir? the last that was that was established neighborship or what is that last host Not the last host to join the group the first c r1 switch pc 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 and pc right and uh, this guy for example so this guy has sent the uh, report packet right so r2 comes in the picture first then this guy sent r3 comes in the picture then this guy sent r4 comes in the picture then this guy sent r5 comes in the picture so this will become the last host the first who have joined the multicast group the first who has joined the multicast group so if this person going to leave the group right then it will send the lead message not this kind of this kind of person this is according to the rx again most of the vendor it is going to behave like this when a person will leave the group it will send the lead message if you see right now on the cisco cli how this thing is happening take example take example on r3 i am going to join the group interface do ping one minute let me ping from every router ping 255 1.255.255.255 i have okay i have opportunity with every person 1213104 right perfect i want to join Take example in phase zero slash zero IP IGMP join group two two eight dot one one, right? IP interface zero slash zero IP IGMP join group two two eight dot one one. IP IGMP two two eight dot one one. IP IGMP. R two. One minute. One minute. Four. Million three. Get the group. But it has to be sent. Um, okay. One minute. R three. Let's make it. Yep. Not sending the masses. Yep. But then R five is going to be. It will send the masses. This is the last group. So this is how the RSC thing, what RSC thing is. The it's recommended that host and a leave group mass only the leaving member of the last host. Okay, last host is like that. The last host this guy. But again, in your normal operating system, it's not behave like this, right? So this is the last member, right? Because they have some the report packet, they have some the report packet, they have some the report packet, they have some the report packet. R two, R three, R four, and R five are the last member. So if this guy will send the lead message, see yeah, R two, R three. If this person is going to leave the group, right? If this three person is going to leave the group, they will never send the lead message. And this is how the things are working. But again, it's not happening in the real world. See, R two was uh, leaving the group. He is not sending the lead message. R three also leaving the group. He is not sending the lead message. And R four is also leaving the group. He is not sending the lead message. Only done by the R5 because R5 was the last member. They have uh, sent the report packet. Hey, chal, ja, snan kar, snan kar, laptop band kar, laga charge pe. There is the now clear. Yeah. Okay. But again, most of the vendor is going to be of support like this, right? The Cisco is going to support like this, or according to the RFC. But yeah, normals we we have like normal. You go out check it. Two three four five four. Hmm. The five last part will be. Hmm. So four five three two four means four last part means four last part. No, five three two. Two three. Yeah 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 yeah. Acha, फिर से जान कर वापस लेने को तो हाँ ठीक है. Thank you.
None. None. And. नहीं मिलेगा Now, try to understand one thing over there. Now, the thing is that whenever this this guy is sending a leave message, right? In this leave message, what happened? They are telling this person, "Hey, I want to leave the group, right?" I want to leave the group. For which person? Sorry. For which person? This one. So whenever the router will receive the leave message on this particular interface, right? Whenever the router will receive receive the leave message on this particular interface, immediately what happened? The router will generate the group specific. router will generate the group specific security whenever the router will receive the leave message it will generate the group specific security group specific security will send on the which destination address dot 6.1 dot the group multicast address to just asking hey is there any other person that wants to receive the multicast traffic for this particular group listen to me when this person has sent the leave message right what happened he is informing to the this router hey don't send a multicast stream for this particular ip i'm sending this multicast pack uh, leave message right source will be one one ip address at destiny what all host router uh, all routers right dot one is all host and dot two is all routers when r1 will receive the leave message on this particular interface what happened they will generate the group specific query right hey is there any one is there any other one that wants to receive the multicast traffic for this particular network if yes then it will send the report packet if user are present then it will send the report packet and what happened they will keep sending the multicast system still keep sending the multicast system. they will not receive of course but they will keep sending the multicast system if No one has given the reply report packet right in the response of the group specific query packet. If nobody is going to send the report packet in the response of the group specific query packet, what happened? This guy stop sending multicast traffic for which network? Yes. So whenever if you see right now, I'll go in the router. And R three, I said no IP address join group. I'm saying the leave message, right? What happened? See, stop this guy. Then can you see that the leave group one one three sending? What multicast address I'm going to use? Dot two, right? For which person I'm going to leave the group? For this person, right? leave message 
for which group I'm leaving this, uh, uh, leaving a list in the leave message for this particular. Hey, don't send me the multicast testing for the, this particular address. What router is doing? R1, right? Which message I'm sending? Group is specific query, right? Is there any group is specific query written over there? No. You have to assume. From this part in normal right in normal in normal what happened you see immediately i'm sending right the lead masses and after that we have a group specific query This is the normal query if you see. And this one is a, sorry. Group specific query. The group specific query, right? Sorry, normal query will send on which multicast address. Group specific query on sending on which multicast address? Only for the specific group because the leave message someone has sent me for which group? So immediately what happened? When the router will receive the leave message, will send a group specific query. And when the router will send a group specific query, if the client are interested, right? then it will send the report packet. If there's no client as there, then normally what happened, it will wait for the three seconds after that. I'm going to stop sending the router, will stop sending the multicast traffic. But if the router will receive the report packet, then the router will keep sending the multicast traffic for this particular network. If you see, so I'll show you this part as well as go a little bit up and uh, see. Uh, no, I'm getting confused. Yes, so sir. now, uh, um, so when R, this was R3, right? Sending the leave group message. Yep. Correct. So, yeah, so I thought the leave... ask a group. Uh, yes, tell me. Uh, so I thought. Wo router may but the router may also it was sending shown that it was leaving that group, right? Yeah, yeah. But you told only the last member of that particular I member told group. so this was the last member of this group, right? R3 is the last R3. member, there's no other member is there. R4, R5? R4. I already removed it previously. Achha, to last me up R3 go nika like yeah. Okay. So if you see this one, the upper one, and uh, see the leave masses, who is sending the leave masses? R5, right? When R5 is sending the leave mass on which multicast address dot two, right? What happened? The router one, that's a 101, is sending the group a specific query for which one? Hey, don't send the multicast traffic. When the router will receive the uh, group, is, uh, when the router will send the group a specific query, and when the client will receive, what client is going to do? Hey, I want to listen the multicast traffic for this group. I want to listen the multicast traffic for the customer. That means uh, suppose once R3 is leaving the group, then uh, R2, R4, and R5, again, they are sending the report message of course, to R1. Of, of course, because see, uh, this person, uh, let's be more. This person has joined the group right now. In this group, what happened? We have a 228.1, we have a R2, we have R3, and we have R5, right? So, this guy is not there. Okay, so in this group, so when R5 is sending the leave message, right? So, R5 is sending the leave message to the R1, right? That's R5, send the leave message to the R R1, all the multicast host, uh, all the multicast router. What R1 is doing? 
R1 will immediately because still this two person still wants to receive the multicast traffic, right? They have removed the group, but still two persons are there in the multicast uh, address, right? So what happened? They will send the group a specific query. Hey, is there anyone that wants to receive the multicast traffic? The group is specific query sent by the R1, right? To this address. And after that, what happened? The client is interested, right? If the client is interested, what happened? They will send the report packet. And this report packet for which one? This one. Right? Will it send the report for other multicast address also? No, this is a different one. This is a different for group. So one dot one dot two is different one, right? Yeah, one dot one dot two. They have joined for the this group. Uh, two two six dot one one. Maybe the I made the I haven't joined this group. Uh, this one or two for the two dot eight dot eight one. So if you see this part, you can see that. Not this one. This one. You can see that. Deeper. So it will only send the group uh, report group message for the one that the other router is leaving it for, correct? Yes. So R5 is leaving the group for 228.1.1.1. And if mm -hmm. R2 or R3 is part of 228.1.1, they'll send a report group for 228.1.1. Yes, yes, yes. yes. This is how your lead mechanism is going to be work. If the client will send the lead message, the router will send the group specifically. We are just asking, is there any other, other one wants to receive the multicast traffic? If yes, then send the report packet. If no, then our router will wait for the three second. And after the three second, what happened? Router stops sending the multicast traffic to the client. But tell me one thing. The query packet router one is sending in the right. Query packet router one is sending at every 60 second, right? And in the query, what happened? The client will send the report packet, right? In the response of query, it will send the report packet, right? So, guys, try to understand if you have a 1,000 user, right? If you have 1,000 user and if the client is sent the query packet, right? And they are still receiving the multicast traffic, right? They are still receiving the multicast traffic. They are still receiving a multicast traffic. In that case, tell me one thing. If this guy is in the query packet, just for what? Because the query packet is a periodic packet, right? Query packet is a priority packet. In the response, what happened? Everyone is sending the report packet. All the 1,000 users. Bandwidth vistas. And can you imagine the router one is going to process all the 1,000 packets at every 60 seconds. Now can you imagine router one is going to process all the report packet at every 60 second. If router one is just sending a single query. All hosts are there. They are still receiving the multicast traffic, right? They are still receiving a multicast traffic. But what happened? If you're sending the query, I need to give the response. And the response, what happened? I need to send the report packet. How many report packet I have to send? If you have 1,000 user, I have to send the 1,000 packet. And router has to process all the 1000 packet at every 60 second. Wastage of bandwidth, wastage of CPU. This was happening in the version one. This was happening in the version one. In version two, what they did,
Okay, so R3. In version one, what happened? This was the problem is happening if the 1000 user are sitting in this LAN network and if this guy is in the query packet, all the 1000 user has to send the report packet. Right? During the receiving the multicast traffic, they have to send the report packet because query is what? Periodic. Query was is what? It's a periodic packet, right? So all the 1000 user has to send the report packet. In version two, what they will did? In version two, they introduced the MRT concept. Maximum response time. That is by default. 10 seconds, you can manipulate up to 25. By default is 10 seconds, you can manipulate up to 25. This maximum response time, MRT, right, is only sent in the QD packet. This MRT is only present in the QD packet. In normal, if you see the MRT, this is the QD packet, you can see the MRT is there. If you see the normal one, the report packet, in the report packet, MRT is there, but it's still, Reset to the zero. And even if you see the group specific query, it also has an MRT field. Sorry, uh, Lee Mass MRT field is there, right? But uh, this set to the zero, right? And I can show you this is the group specific. Query. So only in the query packet you can see the MRT, not in the normal packet. And what this guy is going to do, this guy this guy is going to remove the extra report packet. It is going to make a report separation. MRT is just going to make a report separation. Separation means what? Stop sending. Instead of sending, ten report packet. I just send the one report packet. Now, based on MRT. So when this guy try to understand, when this guy send the QD packet, right? In the QD packet, what happened? They will put the time 10 seconds. And it's a decimal format. So what happened? Sorry, uh, it's a uh, float value. So what happened when the R2 will receive this packet, right? When R3 will receive this packet, when R4 will receive this packet, when R5 will receive this packet, they will randomly, right? Randomly, they will choose the one time from one to 10 seconds. Maybe they will choose the 2.5. Maybe they will choose the 3.0, maybe they will choose the 4.7, and maybe they will choose the 1.5. When the router wants in the query packet, this query packet comes to the R2, R3, R4, and R5. Once they will receive the query packet, what happens? Randomly, they will choose the one time from in between 10 seconds. What happened? This timer will get expired first, right? Once the five timer will expire first, right? Because it's a 1.5 second and it's the 2.5 second, right? So 1.5 will get expired first. So when this will get expired first, what happened? So it will receive this packet and it will make a flooding. It will send to the this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. When R2, R3, and R4 receive the report packet from the client, it will suppress the own report. So how many report R1 will receive single? Instead of the four, now R1 will receive the single. Again, I'm repeating what happened over there. So R1, right? R1 has sent the query packet. In the query packet, they put the MRT field 10 second, right? Over there. And so default value can change up to 255. And MRT is just going to make a report suppression, right? So what happened when this guy 
are to elicit this information from the query packet, they will choose the any random type, maybe the 4.5, 3.2, 1.2, and 3.7. They will choose any of the time, right? Random time. So what happened if the R4 will tower will start first, right? So R4 will send the report packet. When R4 will send the report packet, what happened? They will receive it, they will receive it, they will receive it, and also they will receive it. So when the R2 will receive it, what happened? They will suppress the own report. R3 will suppress the own report and R5 will suppress the own report. Because they got the idea, okay, someone has sent the report. Someone has sent the report, so let me suppress my own report. So now R1 will receive the single report packet. This mechanism is known as the report suppression. And that is done by the MRT. And MRT is only present in the, not only MRT is present in the IGMP version two, it's not there in the version one. And this mechanism is known as the report suppression. And by using this thing, what happened? We can remove the wastage of bandwidth and CPU as well as. You can see what I can do right now. Can we have a look over there? If you show you, the, I'll show you the capture. Oh, let me do one thing. Start this guy again. Start. And just wait for some time. Wait for some time. And I'm just going to capture the IGMP and wait for some time. R1 will send the query packet, right? And the response, it has to receive the four uh, report packet, right? There's a four user is there. Just wait for some time. It will send the query packet and it has to get the, the router will get the only one report. Can you see that? One of five. R1 has sent the query packet. R5 is given the report. Sir, R2, R3, R4 are all part of the same report group of the same multicast group, 226.101.1? Right now, yes, same. Okay. Right now, yes, same. This query packet is the, this query, this query packet does not have any multicast address. No, wait. Okay, but the report is sent for 226.101.1.1, right? The R5 is sending in the report packet. It will send only for the, yeah. Right, right, right. So now my question is, does R2, R3, R4 have the same multicast group added on there? I'll show you uh, one, one minute. Uh, one minute, one minute. Uh, mm, Swami, I'll show you your question as well. Wait for some. Did you pack it again sending R1? Five was sending the packet, right? Now, one, three, seven, the Back. Let me enable the debug on IP router. IGMP. Done. And wait for something. R1 is server, right? For 9.9 .9 second. Okay, this is the dot 40. They know this part. Yep. Query and now I got the report must not ignore this part. I got the remote for the 105. R4 is setting the time. What is 6.0? This guy. So this guy has set the 5.6. 6.0 and what about the R2 now? 
7.0. So which time expired first? 5.6. So it will send the report packet. See. Is in uh, so you're getting cut off in the middle and uh, I think your screen is not showing what you're talking. So if I send the report packet, what are uh, we can't hear you, sir, and I can't see the screen as well. Uh, sorry, sir, but when you were talking, uh, your screen was not refreshing. Is the same as it happened with every person like Alvin and Swami? I'm also facing the same, same issue. Mm. And sorry, but I didn't understand the concept. So basically, you have to show me what is configured on each of those routers. Every router is configured with the IGMP only. So one minute, sorry. All this router is configured only with the IGMP on this particular interface, on this particular interface, IGMP, on this particular interface, IGMP, IGMP, and IGMP. And they all join the test group. Uh, Okay, so R2, R3, R4, R5 are all join the group 226.1.1.1, right? Right, and nothing happened. Only the IGMP version 2 is there. Okay. Nothing. I'm just trying to show you the report suppression, how the report suppression is working with the, uh, with the help of MRT. Okay. Can you, can you, so when, yeah, yeah. Can you show that again? Yeah. When R1 is in the report pack, QD packet, in this QD packet, what they will do? They will put the MRT field 10 seconds, right? Clear? Right, yeah. Okay. When all the client will receive this uh, report uh, report packet, what they, sorry, QD packet, what they will do? They will change, uh, they will uh, take any random uh, time from this range. They will take the 2.5, 3.5, maybe 6.7, and maybe 7.0. In this case, what happened? Whose timer expired first? This timer, 2.5. So what happened, they will send the report packet. Once the report packet comes to the switch one, switch one will flood this report packet to this guy, this guy, and this guy, and this guy. What they will do, they will just delete the own report packet. They will cancel the own report packet. They will not send their own report packet. This is called as a MRT, separation, report separation. So instead of sending the four report, how many report I'm sending? Only one, that is sent by that. R2 will send the report packet to 226.1.1.1 only, right? Right. So destination is 226.101. How many users are sitting in the 101? All these three users are sitting in the 101. Okay. So the switch again forwards that report packet to all of those. Switch flood the report packet. Switch will flood the, they will perform the unknown gas flooding, right? They don't know where the distance and Mac is there, right? So I will perform the unknown gas flooding. I will flood this packet over this every interface, right? So now when will R1 again generate the query packet? Again, R1 see. So every time they will choose the randomness. So let's have a look now. See, R1 has generate, uh, send the query packet. Send the query packet. What happened? Every guy is going to set the timer. We see the query packet. I'm going to set the time of 4.8 seconds. R2 is in the 4.8. R3 is saying that 7.8. And what R4 and R5? 9.6, 6.8. Whose time expires for uh, expire first? 4.2, uh, 4.8, right? R2. So what R2 will do? R2 will send the report and R3 will cancel it. Cancel the report. R4 cancel the report and R5 cancel the report. And R1 only receive the one report from R2 only. See? Next time, maybe some other router will be there. Let's see. 
So because four point eight is lesser than the other one, right? And now next time. So now next time it should be R five, is it? Is that no, the? It's not. I. It's because it's time is taking randomly, right? It can be anything. So again, what happened? The R two is taking the lower one. How? See that. R two was taking what time? Two point two. R three. Four point six. So now. Two point two. Four point six. R four R five. R four is seven point four and eight point four. Eight point eight. Seven point four and eight point eight. Post R X R R two. It will send the report packet. R five will cancel it only for because I receive from my one or two. So only this can send the report packet. See, I receive the report packet from home. Not this one. This one. So it means look like that uh, in a in a class teacher asking one question. Who will raise first hand? He will reply. Rest of uh, student will not. Reply. Who will not raise first hand over there? That's a totally different answer. It's I mean, taking a like one message. Message report message. It's generating. It's one one PC generating the report. Then rest of just listen and it just stop uh, stop the own uh, report details. Like this. No, it's not like that. So now see the Swami. What happened? Send the query packet. What happened? I am receiving the report from the one of five, because one of five took the lower one. Now the one of five was the one of five is done, just three point six, and other than seven point four, eight point six, and five point six. So three point is lower. So now the R five is in the report packet. See, I am receiving the report packet from one of five. And the default mechanism of the IGMP, we are not okay. Doing. So after after receiving the report packet from R5, sir. So mm -hmm. now will R1 again generate the query packet? Of course, this again query packet is a periodic packet. Yeah, it's a periodic packet. It will wait for 10 seconds and again. After gen after 10 seconds, it will generate again. After right? 60 seconds, query packet will send on a 60 seconds. So IP IGMP. Oh, okay. Maximum response time is what? 10 second. Amati, now whose time will expire first? This is the now query packet report delay, and I'm getting the one or two. Now. So this query is a 60 second, right? Still they are receiving the multicast. If you see, they are still receiving the multicast traffic, right? But they are sending the query packet, right? That's a periodic packet. That's we are removing the report in reportation over there because everyone is sending the report packet. I need to make a separation. Not clear, Swami. Yeah, no. So, I mean, mm, no. the idea behind this is, like Devendra was trying to say. So, we are basically doing a report suppression, obviously. But uh, so now, if multiple groups want to mm -hmm. kind of uh, broadcast, then well, that, one minute. Multiple, multiple, multiple group. Multiple groups want to, you know. uh send the so that is not so there is no so this this particular timer is decided by see, the when i uh, try to understand please one minute try to understand this way this server right okay and such client right two clients only there okay right now all these two client is able to receive multicast plan right right now they are receiving but what happened at every 60 second r1 server is sending the query packet this is the periodic packet so what happened they will receive this query uh, query packet so they will put the timer 2 second and they will put the timer Five second. What happened? If I'm not going to do anything, what happened normally? They will send the, they will send the own report packet. They will send the own report packet. Two report packet. Our server will receive, right? What we are doing using the MRT. My time will, be, my time will get expired first, right? So I will send the report packet. So it will receive. It will send to this guy and this guy. 
So what happened? The PC will receive this report packet from the PC number one. So they will suppress the own report. They will suppress the own report. They will not send the report to the server now. So in this case, server will receive the only one report packet from the one client. And report packet only sent, see, report packet can be sent in the two ways. Client sent report packet in the response of query. Right? In the response of query. And another way, client send report packet when they join the multicast group. Two things is happening. This report is known as a solicit solicited report. And this is known as a Unsolicited. Solicited means what? If somebody is sending, I need to respond to it. Unsolicited means what? If someone is not sending, right? I want to join the multicast group, like this one. A new in, a new user came and he said that hey, I want to join the multicast group. So they will send the unsolicited report. If the user is coming and he said that, hey, I want to join the multicast group, so they will send the unsolicited report to the server. After what happened, this client, uh, the uh, server sent the query packet, they will receive it and they will give the report packet. This is known as a solicited. So if there has a multiple group sites, so another thing is to understand this group, the query packet I'm sending on which multicast address, dot one, Source will be my server IP address, right? But dot one, and report packet I'm sending for which group? For the specific destination 226.111. So if you see the client, take example, right now they have joined the one group, I can join the multiple group as well as. Interface zero slash zero, IP, IGMP, join group 228.101, then R3, IP IGMP join group 228.1111 and uh, this guy as well as R5 228.101. Let's ping from R1. Ping 226.101. All the host we have for the 2261 and ping 228.101. All we have host portal to write one. I can join the another group as well as interface zero slash zero IP IGMP join group will be 227.101. And this guy as well as IP IGMP 227.101. So three groups are there. One group, another group, and another group. 226.101, R2 is there, R3 is there, R4 is there, R5 is there, 228.101, and 227.101, only R2 and R3 is there. This group, this group, and wait for the 228 you will also get the two two. Yes, this group. 28081, right? Then this guy. 103. And then this guy. Again, just see. Sending the query packet and receiving the report for the different different group. So one query. I'm sending you all, make to you all. And if you see, one query I'm sending. Okay, I received the report. 
from one of five for this group. Receive the report. Well, one of the not this one. This one. For this group. And receive the report on this group. Only one report I'm accepting. Only one report. Uh, sir, I understand this logic, but, same process will happen for the but when I'm trying to put it to a real life, this thing, so imagine if we have three users mm -hmm. or four users who are subscribed mm -hmm. to a Netflix uh, serial, okay, and all four of us are watching at the same time. So how do you relate that how to the same time? PC can uh, receive a multicast. Okay, you are so right now all they're watching the same time, right? Because imagine that Netflix allows four users to watch the same mm -hmm. serial at the same time. That's because you pay some money or something. There is an option, right? Where you four people can mm -hmm. watch the same subscription at the same time, right? So now if I put right. that scenario here, how do I, what is the point of this query and report here now? I don't right. understand that. Tell me one thing. You have joined the Netflix, take example, this is your laptop, right? This is your laptop. Right. On this laptop, you're running with the Amazon. On this laptop, you're running with the Netflix. On this laptop, you're running with the G, right? Okay. Now, on this laptop, you're running, right? Same thing. This guy is also running Amazon. This guy is also running Netflix. This guy is also running Amazon. This guy is also running Netflix. Amazon, Netflix. Now, so tell me how many, if you are sending the query packet, how many report packets client will send? How many report packet client will send? Uh, so client has to send the report packet basically to whatever he wants to. Uh, basically, if you're sending the query packet, how many report packet a client will send? So whatever he wants to view, he will send a report packet for that, right? Right now, how many users are there? Four. One, two, four users are there, right? What report packet will send? Right. right. Okay. One report packet is going to consume, take example, 100 bytes of data. And one report packet has to be processed by the router one as well as. So right now, how many report packet are R1 is processing for? Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. At every 60 second, right? Okay, and what is the size of packet? 100 bytes. So what is the total size of 400 bytes, right? Okay, right. this was the version one. In version two, what happened? I'm sending you only one report packet. How many bandwidth? 100 bytes. Does that in mean in R2, if R2 is viewing something, R3 is viewing something, R4, R5 is viewing something. So if R2 sends a query or a report packet to R1 saying that uh, this is what I'm viewing. So R3, R4, R5 will have continued access to it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, of course. What I told you that my, listen to my, I told you that they still receiving your multicast traffic, but the problem with the QD packet is a periodic packet. Try to understand they all are still receiving a multicast traffic, but the problem with the QD packet is a repo, uh, periodic packet. So if you are sending the query packet to me, I need to respond to it by using the report packet. So if all if all person will receive the query packet, how many report packet they will generate? Four. That is not a good thing, right? That I need to suppress it by using your report suppression. So they will choose the one random time over there from uh, from the ten second. They will choose the two, three, four, five. Whose time will expire, uh, get expired first? They will send the report packet and what they will do, they will cancel it own report. But if they are still receiving a multicast traffic, they are not sending a leave message. Listen, they are not sending a leave message. They are sending the report packet. Swami, so, mean, now understand or not now? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. So basically they continue no, to receive the multicast traffic, correct? Yeah, of course they continue to receive the multicast traffic. They are not affecting on your data traffic. They are not affecting. I'm just trying to reduce the control plane traffic. They are not affecting on the data plane traffic. Data is just still receiving. 
But if all of a sudden R three wants to not view it anymore, then he is going to send a leave message, correct? Of course. And then that entire timer will get disturbed, right? With respect to R five, R four, R two, because they are continuing to, because R four, R five is still viewing it. So what happened with R four and R five? Nothing effect on R four and R five. Are you watching the? Uh, so you are watching the Netflix, right? And I'm also watching the Netflix. So. Is there any effect will happen on my side? Yes, it will not happen. But how will R three stop receiving it immediately? Is my question. So now imagine the timer is two point four seconds for R two. For R three, the timer is four yeah. seconds. For R four, the timer is okay, six so seconds. And R five, you are you are two point four three second and four second and five second, right? Right. Okay. So R two is the guy who is sending the report because it's got the least timer, maximum right, response right. time. Right now, yeah. in between, so, so what happened? They will receive the re they will receive the report. They will suppress the report uh, report packet, right? Correct. Own report packet. Ah. Right. So now, then, now the timer changes, right? Now the timer changes to uh, a new timer, and where R three is the got the least timer. Yeah. And now, after the change will happen, and R three will get the least time, right? For example, uh, uh, five second, two second. Sorry. Two second, five second, four second, three second, right? Right. So in between this, if so now R three will send the report packet. No, in between this, what happens? There is a flap in my house. In that two seconds, right? There is a flap. So basically, my time my happen. connectivity. This, the user, the user will, the user will only send the only set the this time, right? User only set this uh, this MRT time. Once they will receive the query packet from the router, because in the query packet you have a timer, not in the report packet, not in the lead masses. Okay, okay. Only in the query packet the report. So when the query will send by the router, after receiving the query packet, right after see, wait for a minute. Wait for a minute. Receive the query and what I'm doing. After receiving the query, I'm applying the time mode. After receiving the query, not in the automatically, I'm going to change the time mode. It's not like that because that's why they are putting the uh, MRT in the query packet, not in the other packets. Now clear? Yes, law. Thank you. Guys, you can change the security interval time as well as if you have a very big network, right? You can change it. How you can change it? You just need to go on the interface zero slash zero. And I said the IP IGMP maximum. Very maximum response time. You can change up to two, uh, 25 second, right? So you can set the 15 second now. And now the R1 will send the query packet. They will put the 15 second as a MRT. So what is the 224.0.1.40? That's coming in the PIM. That's a routing program. RP. Oh, okay, okay. Sir, is there a 224.0.0.2 wala packet in any different? That should be there, right? That should be sent. Where is that packet? 224.0.0.2, where it sends to the router? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Actually, that will come only when the leave group. Okay. Of course. When the host is going to inform to the router, hey, please don't send multicast stream. And he's informing not to the single router, all router who is sending the multicast stream to me. I'm informing every router, not to the single. Take example. 
if server uh, switch is there, right? And router one and router two, and both these guys sending the multicast stream to this guy. Is it possible to send the leave massive individual for this person and this person? No, I have to use the group address. So I'm sending a dot two. So dot two means what? All the router can listen this address. All the router is listening to the dot two address. So what happened when the PC will send a leave message to the dot two? All router can receive it and process it. And once they will receive it after that, they, what they will do? They will just ask you, hey, is there anyone who wants to receive the multicast system or not? They will ask you by sending a group specific query. Questions, guys? Any questions in IGMP version two? The leave masses, group specific query, and uh, you know the IMRT. Any questions, anyone? No? Okay, buddy. Bye-bye.